when I think back, uh, getting off the bus at my school, and then noticing that this silver, like flying saucer spaceship was coming in for a landing. The door opened up and it was like the local rich kid and his dad was dropping him off and we were just like, just stop cold this incredible silver shape. I can tell you it was a powerful image that has carried through to this day. It just left such an impression. That car was a 1963 Corvette Stingray, and that boy was Tom Peters. From early on, Tom would draw everything he could. Along the way, he would discover the work of another artist who would inspire him to draw cars in a way that didn't just capture their look, but also revealed their attitudes, characters, and personalities. It's because one of my probably uh, biggest artistic influences, I will tell you, was of all people Ed Big Daddy Roth because a kid that age uh, that was into cars loved uh, Hot Rod Magazine, you know, and uh, they all would always have in there a fold out double page spread of t shirt designs, and there were these, you know, they're characters, these cartoon figures with big giant slicks and fire and smoke coming out, and a big arm coming out with shifting and a big blown engine out of the hood, and I was just enamored by that artistically. So the cars, although they were cartooned and distorted, they were correct in their detail and line and proportion. And uh, I was attracted to that somehow, and I would try to emulate that, and I would do my own drawings. Uh, to the point, I remember in seventh and eighth grade, I would take my originals, I would talk to the gals in the front office, and they would run copies for me. And I would sell those for a quarter a piece, and I was selling them, you know. And uh, people would pay a quarter to have one of those little pieces of artwork, you know. I go, whoa, this is kind of cool, you know. Tom would eventually find himself at Art Center, where he studied industrial design. And this was the premier design school. And uh, during the course of Art Center, I, I was getting pretty thin with money. General Motors had internships, and usually you didn't apply for an internship till like you were a junior at the earliest, and then, or a senior. Well, I was kind of a desperate situation where I could only afford you know, one more semester, but I was a sophomore. And I said, you know, I, I, I just gotta do this. So I put a portfolio together and I submitted it. So I won that and, and spent the summer of 78 right here at design staff. And it, just, it was just, it was like going to heaven, you know? When I got back to Art Center, because of my portfolio had, had built so much, uh, they awarded me a scholarship which, say, again, saved my life. And upon uh, graduation, um, I was made an offer by Chuck Jordan, at that time the VP of design. And again, it was like, it was like a dream. Yeah, I remember when Tom first started GM Design. You know, I, I got a chance to meet him. I think he, he may have been in the advanced design area at the time. And what was really cool, and I'm not sure how old he was, maybe 22, 23 years old, whatever, he had this youthful enthusiasm, but he always seemed to uh, catch the attention of the right members of leadership, people like Jerry Palmer and John Caparo and uh, Chuck Jordan, uh, who appreciated his enthusiasm and his design abilities. You know, Jordan loved, loved his stuff. It was just round and fluid and uh, a lot of volume to it. And, uh, and I think his big, his big moment was the Corvette Indy and uh, really bringing this kind of fluid, uh, expressive, boundless form language to, to GM. That Indy, Indy vet was a battle. Jordan came down and essentially stopped everything. You guys have nothing. I remember working in the basement. I said, Tom, we need to react. So we had six sculptors working on two designs, and then it gravitated to one car. And that was really the most influential car across all of General Motors design for quite a long time. And uh, it's still, you know, it's still timeless today. But those concept cars have a way of feeding future production vehicles. It was, uh, quite an experience and then be able to have these young lions under me and to see them go out and run the organization now it's it's quite quite fun it really was 
His love for collaboration in the creative process and ability to inspire others eventually led to Tom being named the chief of design for the C6 Corvette. As a leader, Tom encouraged his team to create cars for 10-year-olds that would also appeal to the 10-year-old inside us all. It's no wonder that when filmmaker Michael Bay walked through the secret places within GM looking for inspiration, he found cars that he could transform into heroes for kids of all ages. Michael Bay was working on the Transformer movie in the early stages, and he wanted something very special. He had a relationship with GM, and before he even started work, he came to visit. We sat in my office and talked about the movie, and he talked about what he's looking for in vehicles, and then Michael and I just walked the studios, picking out different uh, vehicles that we thought might be good for the movie. The Stingray concept was in uh, Transformer movies. It was in a couple, first as a coupe, and then we did an open car version. As we're developing the C7 Corvette, boy, Tom Peters and his team wanted to call it Stingray. We had done a Stingray concept, but for the production vehicle, they wanted to call it Stingray. And I kept telling them, you know, it didn't look like a Stingray to me yet. It just didn't, I didn't feel it. I mean, the car was good. And there have been some great Corvettes over the years that I love and that I own, but they're not stingrays, you know, and so they kept pushing and the shapes that were developing on the design, that it moved to yet another level. So it all seemed to work together. I'll never forget the day when I said to Tom and his, and his gang, because they are like a gang, <laughs> I, said, I said, you know, I think we have a stingray here. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is the new Corvette. Well, tonight is, of course, another night in the incredible journey of the American sports car called Corvette. Tonight, we celebrate the introduction of the seventh generation, or C7, as we call it, right here in the Motor City. Tom's career wasn't over yet. He still had one more Corvette Stingray he had to get out. Going all the way back into the early days of Corvette, engineers, designers, and racers alike dreamed of making it a mid-engine sports car. Together with a team that included everyone from the highest levels of management to powertrain, engineering, manufacturing, and the Corvette race team, Tom's group began working on an all-new design that would still be unmistakably Corvette. There is no better example of collaboration than what happens with Corvette. Corvette engineering, Corvette design, Corvette racing, and the customer. That whole circle of knowledge and how they all learn from each other and build on it in a very positive way. It's just they all know each other and work together and the customer benefits. I think the relationship with design and engineering is, is the best that's ever been in GM and that's when you get magic happening. Tom is one of the total pros on how to productionize uh, design. He's done that for years. It's probably better than many, many designers I've ever seen, including some of the great ones that are known for great design, but were they really productionizing those designs? I don't know, they made some great concept cars, they made some beautiful design statements, but productionizing those things for people to enjoy and see and buy every day, that's a whole different level of understanding of what it takes to engineer and design together. And I think Tom is the very, uh, very rare heir of those type of people. He had a way of translating, surfacing design language into energy. If you look at the way Corvette surfaces are constructed, there's a tension or an energy. All the surfaces are pulled super taut across the feature lines and around the mechanicals. And that gives this car this dynamic energy that I think other people are now trying to copy. 
and uh, we're taking advantage of uh, inside General Motors as well. Throughout his career, Tom has been inspired by those around him, while also providing a boundless source of enthusiasm and creative energy to the rest of the Corvette team. Tom believed in an energized work atmosphere and that our studio was clearly different than all the other studios. We were always on the edge. Ours is like, you know, you just, you just stepped into a, into a nightclub and we've got a rock band playing and, you know, you, so he, he believed in that, that creative tempo. Our nickname for Tom, Tom, we used to, used to call him uh, DJ Tommy P. White Chocolate was our nickname for him. <laughs> Well, Tom Peters is, is really the heart and soul of design for the team and creativity. He really brings a creative energy to our team, uh, always tries to push the envelope and keeps things modern and fresh, and really um, reminds us that we're really working on dream cars and that we really need to keep that in front of us. There's actually an expression in design that you only have one great Corvette in you. Well, the last two Corvettes have been Tom Peters Corvettes. We've worked together on them, so there's proof that that's not true, but he's had influence way back uh, in many Corvettes over history, as well as many other cars uh, coming out of General Motors. And so that font of creativity seems bottomless, and I think that's really unique in the auto industry, and especially in design. I think Tom and I have been through some incredibly difficult times around design and where it stood in GM. And throughout all of that, he always was a quintessential designer. I mean, his sketches, his vision. Tom has touched so many different Corvettes, so many performance cars. I mean, he absolutely has more than deserves to be in the Corvette Hall of Fame. You know, we've done essentially the next generation car. We've done it together. And I think it's going to be a huge uh, success. And I think Tom can take enormous pride uh, in his retirement as to what's been accomplished. You know, he is, the, he is really the most iconic automotive designer, I would say, in the modern era. You look at his span and his scope of uh, influence on Corvettes, probably the longest uh, influence of any designer on a, a sports car like that. So uh, I really mean that when I say that. He's a very important figure in uh, General Motors design, automotive design, and particularly Corvette. He was looking for the car to resonate in younger people, uh, is what he was saying, in that the design would have that shock and awe that we've all experienced the first time you see a Corvette. For his role in creating exciting Corvettes for today that are inspiring the Corvette fans of tomorrow, we welcome Tom Peters into the Corvette Hall of Fame.